Друзья, коллеги, снова приветствую вас всех на своем новостном канале. Как-то незаметно счет выпусков уже перевалил за 60. Растет потихонечку и число подписчиков на всех ресурсах, где эти новости публикуются. А это YouTube, Facebook и Telegram. Предлагаю продолжить движение в этом же направлении. И кто еще не поставил лайки, пусть поставит. Кто не подписался, подпишется. Буду крайне признателен. Ну а теперь к делу, а конкретнее к новостям. Выставка NEB 2023 уже завершилась, но материалов собрано много, в том числе и видеоинтервью. Например, сделанное на стенде Canon. Hi, I'm Paul McNiff with Canon USA. We're here at the NAB booth. Uh, this year we have mostly some improvements on our existing products, but one of the very interesting things that we have that's brand new is an addition to our Flex Zoom series. So we now have a pair of Super 35 lenses. Those are T17 straight through. We have a wide angle and we have a telephoto and we've also introduced relay kits that can then turn them into full frame image circles they basically become the same focal length then as the previous models that we did have uh, in addition we've got some new firmware updates that we've recently announced we added a lot of features to the c70 and the r5c uh, those include for one thing netflix approval for the r5c uh, we've offered the ability to now make selections for when you're using our already fantastic autofocus system. You can select the subject using either a camera dial or uh, the dial on one of our RF lenses. Um, the R5C in addition, because it has the ability to work with our dual fisheye lens for VR uh, production, you can magnify the VR, uh, the VR lens view while you're recording. You can also switch between which one of those lenses you're looking, in, looking to, so you can check the critical focus between the two eyes, if you will. In addition to the other firmware updates, we've also added something, and this is for the R5C and the C70, as well as the C300 Mark III and the C500 Mark II. We've added additional clear scan frequencies to eliminate flickering when doing virtual production. Uh, in a lot of cases, when you're doing virtual production with an LCD screen or a, a, a an LED wall, um, you can have a frequency disruption that'll cause uh, an anomaly within the screen. Now that we have additional frequencies, it's much less likely to occur and you can fine tune it better for your virtual production. We're also showing, behind me on the other side, our new PTZ, um, that is the CRN700. The CRN700 has AI capability where it will recognize a human figure and be able to track back and forth. That's an app that gets uploaded directly into the camera. It'll be available in the 300 and 500 models coming this summer. And the other app that we have for the PTZ cameras is also going to be our auto loop feature. So instead of triggering it on your remote, you can program the camera to just constantly do its own loop track. And then that's most everything that we've got today. Сейчас позволю себе высказать некоторое обобщение, касающиеся как тенденций, которые были продемонстрированы на выставке, так и самой выставки в целом. Как уже отмечалось в предыдущих выпусках, на повестку дня и на ближайшую перспективу вынесены такие темы, как облака, IP, виртуализация, широкое применение технологии виртуальной, дополненной и расширенной реальности. И хотя на экраны продолжают выходить фильмы в формате 3D стерео, новый аватар тому яркий пример, Сама технология ушла в узкую нишу и на выставках практически не демонстрируется. Видимо, на нынешнем витке развития она достигла своего предела, а что будет дальше, увидим. Несмотря на залихватский оптимизм, я бы даже сказал авантюризм касательно IP и облаков, победит более взвешенный подход, который можно сформулировать так – пусть цветут все цветы. Ведь что-то подобное происходило в истории человечества уже не раз. Когда появилось кино, все предрекали смерть театру. Потом все те же прогнозы звучали уже в адрес кино, когда появилось телевидение. Распространение интернета и использование его как среды доставки контента для многих стало причиной предречь кончину телевидения. Но, как видим, все эти технологии сосуществуют. И даже самый древний способ обмена информацией и печатные книги тоже неплохо себя чувствует. Вывод прост. Природа предпочитает союз и союзу или. Так что новые технологии чаще всего приходят в дополнение, а не на смену существующим. А существующие, если и уходят в историю, то плавно и постепенно, а главное – долго. Бывают, правда, и исключения, как и из любого правила. Ну а чтобы не выступать в роли эксперта последней инстанции, коим я, конечно же, не являюсь, передам слово людям, у которых есть все основания рассуждать о направлениях развития отрасли. 
Потому что компании, от имени которых эти люди выступают, как раз и относятся к числу тех, которые эти тенденции определяют. Yeah, into a world where actually the software is uh, decoupled from the underlying hardware. And then it's hard to predict the speed this will take from a dedicated hardware which is still in a rack, like server-based, which uh, then obviously can also go into the cloud with the same technology. So if we take our technology stack, The underlying concept is scalable dynamic software. So it's all based on microservices, containers, out of which those apps are built. And anything will go into this direction. And then it's up basically to our customers, whether they want to run it on-premise, in physical servers, in their own data centers, or in the public cloud. But this is what I see as the upcoming trend and the big shift Because all of this allows a way better utilization of the investment and of the available technology. Just to pick an example, and I uh, frame this in the pyramid of wasted processing. Let me explain you what that means. Let's take a multiviewer, like a physical 19-inch multiviewer. So it has a certain capability. In all honesty, do you max it out? Do you use all the pips that it can do? Do you use all the heads that it can do? No, you won't. Maybe you use 50% of the capacity. So you have your unit and you're using just 50% of it. So look at the, the rack where this multi-viewer is mounted in. There's a lot of other gear, up-down cross converters, whatever it's in there. Do you utilize Everything, every single unit in there and of each of the units, do you utilize it to the maximum that it can offer? No, you don't. So your pyramid of wasted processing is growing. So now you look in your facility. Are you using all of your studios and all of your control rooms 24-7? No, you don't. Maybe half of it. So your pyramid is getting even bigger. So you see, All of this processing yet you put your investment in is there, but you're not utilizing it. So it's a, that's what I call the pyramid of waste processing. This approach of scalable dynamic software, which we introduce with Home, this brings elasticity because it's generic server-based processing underneath. And It's just taking the processing power that it needs. So if you spin up a multi-viewer app, which is just a quad split, it only takes away the processing power it needs for making a quad split. It doesn't take the processing power for 36 pips, which might be the maximum of some multi-viewer. So this allows you to scale already and utilize the investment in processing to a lot better degree. The next element in this elasticity, if you don't need the multi-viewer, you hit stop and it's not consuming any compute. You can use this compute power for running an up-down cross converter, for example. And if you don't use that anymore, you stop it and you do something else. So this is getting a lot better utilization of the processing power that you put your investment in. And I think that's the future. Reader Communications – еще один апологет инноваций, всегда находящийся на их острие. Основатель и руководитель компании Томас Ридель не боится рисковать, приобретая перспективные, на его взгляд, компании, либо инвестируя в те или иные разработки. Хороший пример – Medernet. Эта компания и ее технология несколько лет были, как казалось, обузой для Ридель Communications. Но затем это направление, что называется, выстрелило. Тем более интересно узнать мнение Томаса Риделя о том, как он видит будущее отрасли. Well, the typical problem in the industry is 
not just now but also in the past that people always talk about these buzzwords everything goes towards IP everything uh, goes towards cloud or 5G solving everything in, including peace on earth you know I still believe no matter what buzzwords you have you know it's to have the right solutions and they are typically not black or white they're in between there's lots of grays in between and and that's what we look at at Riedel because is it SDI or IP is it on-prem or is it cloud typically there's good reasons for both and people should be should find partners which have both and you can go in between so your decision is safe when you make the decision for the right partner because that means later on when you see here I need IP, here I need SDI, here I need cloud, here I need on-prem and you can move in between and that's what we do and that's where we believe is the truth at the end of the day and you will always find buzzwords but the question is who is the right partner. На сегодня, пожалуй, все. Выставка NAB 2023 уже позади, вошла в историю. Но материалов, как я и говорил, собрано много, поэтому ближайшие несколько выпусков будут посвящены тому, что представили в Лас-Вегасе те или иные компании. И уже не поверхностно, а чуть более подробно. Поэтому не пропустите, а чтобы не пропустить, подпишитесь. Ну и, если не трудно, поставьте лайки, они вас ни к чему не обязывают, зато позволяют привлечь новых зрителей, наших с вами коллег. До встречи!